Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dallas City of Learning Summer Source Program presented to you by the Writers Garrett. I am Miss Erin, your instructor. Today, we are going to be talking about self-expression and creativity. How do you like to express yourself? Are you a writer? Are you a singer or a dancer? Maybe you're an artist. Maybe you like to paint or draw. However you express yourself, it's always good to remember that everybody has something to share. Now, today we're gonna to read a story about a man named David Drake and the special way that he expressed himself. Now, David Drake, also known as Dave the Potter, was born into slavery in the 19th century. And the way that he expressed himself was special because slaves during that time were not allowed to learn to read or write. But Dave was brave and creative in making art and poetry and pottery. Let's learn more about Dave the Potter. Dave the Potter, artist, poet, slave. Written by Laban Carrick Hill and illustrated by Brian Collier. To us, it is just dirt, the ground we walk on. Scoop up a handful, the gritty grains slip between your fingers. On wet days, heavy with rainwater, it is cool and squishy, mud pie heaven. But to Dave, it was clay, the plain and basic stuff upon which he learned to form a life as a slave nearly 200 years ago. To us, it's just a pot, round and tall, good for keeping marbles or fresh cut flowers. But to Dave, it was a pot large enough to store a season's grain harvest, to put up salted meat, to hold memories. Each one began out of clouds of dust, clotted clumps of clay, ground in the pug meal and carried wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow to Dave's spinning potter's wheel. With a flat wooden paddle large enough to row across the Atlantic, Dave mixed clay with water drawn from Big Horse Creek until wet and stiff and heavy. He threw the clay, sometimes 60 pounds at once, and nobody knew how or where it would land except for Dave. Dave kicked his potter's wheel until it spun as fast as a carnival's wheel of fortune. Like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, Dave's hands buried in the mounded mud pulled out a shape of a jar. His chapped thumbs pinched into the center, squeezed the inside against his fingers outside. As the wheel spun round and round, the walls of the jar rose up like a robin's puffed breast, but only so far before its immense weight threatened collapse. The jar grew so large, Dave could no longer wrap his strong arms around it. If he climbed into the jar and curled into a ball, he would have been embraced. Only then did he stop his potter's wheel and roll long ropes of clay between his dry, caked palms. Dave mounted these coils of clay one by one on the half-finished jar. He ran his wet fingers along the sides to smooth it all together, kicking the wheel with the heel of his foot.
The shoulder and rim shrugged upward as the jar took the shape Dave knew was there, even before he worked the raw mound on his wheel. While the clay dried, Dave pounded wood ash and sand to mix a glass-like brown glaze to withstand time. But before the jar completely hardened, Dave picked up a stick and wrote to let us know that he was here. I wonder where is all my relation, friendship to all and every nation. The end. Now we're gonna try our hand at making our own pot. So each one of you has a supply kit with clay and a toothpick. Now would be a good time for you to pause your video and go get your supplies. And we are back with our clay and our toothpick. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take all your clay out of the packets and you're gonna smoosh them all together and you're gonna roll them into a ball just like this. So you have a nice round ball, just like this. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thumb and you're gonna stick it right in the middle of your ball. So now it kinda looks like that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pinch and you're gonna go around and you're gonna spin it and you're gonna pinch. So you're gonna shape out a pot. Keep pinching and make it bigger and rounder just like that. Keep pinching. And so you have the shape of a small pot. So after you've pinched it as round as you want, you should have something that looks a lot like this little pot. So now you're gonna take your toothpick and you are going to inscribe something on the side of your pot. The first thing you should inscribe should be your name so everyone can know that it's your artwork. So I'm gonna take my toothpick and I'm gonna inscribe my name right here on the side. What I'm also gonna do is, because I want my pot to look cool, I'm gonna do a couple of designs next to my name. And after I've done my designs, one last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a very special word on my pot, my favorite word in the whole wide world. And that's the word love. So I have my name on my pot, I have some designs on my pot, and I also have a really cool word on my pot. So the next part is the fun part, but you're gonna go need an adult. You're gonna need an adult. So why don't you pause the video and go grab someone who can help you. Now, when working with real clay, like Dave did, it requires a special oven called a kiln, and it do goes through a process called firing it. Now, I know you probably don't have a kiln, and I don't either, but a regular kitchen oven will do just fine. Or a toaster oven like this one. Preheat your oven or toaster to 275 degrees. Place your pot on a non-stick cookie sheet or a piece of aluminum foil on a regular sheet. Bake your pot for 15 minutes and then have an adult check to see if it's hardened. It may take longer, so you'll just have to be patient. When it's hardened, your pot should be taken out of the oven and allowed to cool completely before handling it. Once it's cool, it's yours to hold and show off. But keep in mind, this pot is just for show and you shouldn't actually drink from it.
I hope you guys enjoyed reading about Dave the Potter today and making our own Dave the Potter pots. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye.